Hello, my name is Stephen Garver, and this is an introductory video to VELS, an interactive virtual environment for learning surveying concepts and practices. When you first start up the application, you'll need to log in. I will log in now using my own username and password. Upon logging in, the first screen you'll see is the main menu. The main menu options include both learning tutorials and exercises. The tutorials cover the math concepts necessary to complete the exercises. The three exercises included are the leveling exercise, the total station exercise, and the steel tape exercise. On the right side of the screen are a list of regions the user can load in order to provide a variety of different environments to practice surveying. I will demo this now using the Michigan region. Now that the terrain is loaded, I will focus on the leveling exercise. Upon startup of this exercise, you will see the empty terrain. In order to get a better idea of how to complete this exercise, I can use the help screen. This can be accessed by hitting the help button just below the minimap in the top left corner of the screen or by hitting the H key on the keyboard. On the left side of the help screen, I have a series of pages that go much more in-depth into the process of completing the exercise. On the right side of the screen are an interface window, as well na as a navigation window, which goes more in-depth into how to control the camera and the instruments. By hitting the H key again, I can close the help screen. Following the on-screen instructions at the bottom, I now need to select a location for the instrument. So I'll go ahead and select a location that I feel is appropriate. Now that I've selected a location for the instrument, I can now see the instrument has been placed on the terrain, as well as circle indicating the range of accuracy of the instrument. By hitting the F key on the keyboard, I can now focus on the instrument and center the origin point of my main perspective camera on the center of the instrument. In order to break this connection, I can hit the F key again, which will allow the camera to rotate about itself. But for now, I would like to be focused in on the instrument. Following the on-screen instructions, I now need to select a variety of measurement points for the instrument, so I'll go ahead and select a few that I feel are appropriate. Now that I've selected more than two points, I can go ahead and right-click to continue on to the next screen. As you can see, some of my options have changed. In the top left corner of the screen, I have na new progression op options. In the bottom left corner of the screen, I have new camera views. And if you note in the top right corner of the screen, I now have a secondary view. Focusing first on the perspective view, which is the initial view of this exercise, I can rotate my instrument's camera by using the A and D keys. This will allow me to roughly line up with the first measurement point. If you look in the top right corner of the screen in the scope view, you can see the instrument that I'm trying to focus on. And if you look in the top left corner of the screen, you can get an overhead view of the same idea. By hitting the scope view in the camera view option box, my scope camera, which was originally my secondary view, has now become my primary view. My new secondary view is a camera called Signs, which gives me a view of the surveyor, as well as his actions when I complete options in the bottom right corner of the screen called meter controls, such as moving the measuring rod to the right or the left. He will indicate it with various different actions. My next step would be to measure my locations, but I can't do this accurately yet because the instrument has not been set up. So by going to my third camera view, I can go to level setup. By rotating the camera with A and D, I can see three different dials, which can be used to affect the balance. If you look in the top right corner of the screen, the balance camera shows two different bubbles, which shows the instrument setup. It's currently not leveled, so I can use these three different dials to accurately set up the instrument. Now that I feel very confident on how I've set up the instrument, I can proceed back to the scope view, and I can extend the rod if necessary if it is too short, to double its length, but in this case it's not necessary, and I can rock the rod in order to get its true height. At the lowest point is where I will stop the rod so that I can record its point inside of the input table. Once I feel fairly confident for how I've measured all three points that I have selected now, I can proceed on to the next location by hitting next location. This will give me three different options. Yes will allow me to move my instrument to the next location. No will allow me to proceed with where I am and clear will allow me to erase that I ever used this point to begin with. Another progression option I have is to add more points. This can be done at any time, as well as after selecting the next location. Once I am done measuring all of my locations, I can go ahead and hit grade to grade my final result, which will be determined by the number of locations I have selected. The number of locations I have selected will be indicated by the number just above grade, which is my current instrument selection selected instrument's location. A few other things to note is that 
For example, in all camera views, A and D will rotate some version of the instrument. But in the scope view specifically, holding down the shift key while A and D will give me much more accurate movements. And in the mini map, the very center of the instrument's view is indicated by a black line, as so that I can accurately measure the very direction that the instrument is pointing.